Once you've done your calculation and got your answer, the next step is to check it. Why? Well, basically, a typical student will make one mistake per four lines of algebra. An expert, it might be one mistake per ten lines of algebra, but everybody makes mistakes. It's human. You are going to make mistakes. If it's a very short calculation, like sometimes you get to school, maybe you can get away without it. But by the time you get to any serious calculation, which might be you know, 500 lines of algebra, there will be mistakes. Lots of mistakes. So what can you do? Well, you have to check. This won't find all the mistakes, but it'll find a lot of them. How do you check your answers? Well, the simplest method is just to look at the number and say, does this make sense? Is it plausible? If you've calculated the mass of planet as three grams, three grams planet, no, not plausible. Uh, I once set an exercise in the class where I asked students to calculate if you threw a basketball sideways, how much your recoil speed would be. About half the class made a particular mistake in the calculation and ended up with recoil speeds of 10 meters per second. Now meters per second are not a very familiar unit, but if you convert it into kilometers an hour, that's 36 kilometers an hour. Do you really recoil at 36 kilometers an hour when you throw a basketball sideways? No, you do not. I get very mad when I see totally stupid numbers come out at the end of calculations and nobody even comments on it. So look at the numbers. If it's units you're familiar with, then you should be able to tell you, is it vaguely plausible? If it's something unfamiliar, like let's say you're trying to calculate um, the mass of a star and you come up with 10 to the 21 kilograms. I mean, you know stars are big, 10 to the 21 is big. What you do in this situation is compare it with something. Sure, 10 to the 21 is big, but the mass of the sun is 2 by 10 to the 30 kilograms. So it's a billion times less than the mass of the sun. So it's actually an extraordinarily small star. It's much smaller even than the moon. So that's not plausible. So look at the numbers and check if they're plausible. If necessary, compare them to something. Uh, stop me getting very annoyed and it will save you a lot of trouble with doing long calculations if you can spot these really stupid answers. So that's one method. The next method is to look at the functional form of an equation. Let's say, for example, you do a calculation, say that you're throwing a ball up in the air and the height it will go is proportional to g over v. g is gravitational constant and v is velocity. Is that plausible? g over v? Well, because v is on the bottom, the bigger the velocity, the smaller the height. Now, that doesn't really make sense. If you throw something really fast, it doesn't go as high. If you make v zero, you throw it not at all. g over zero is infinity, so it goes to infinity. That doesn't make sense. How about if you go in space? If there's no gravity, you can't throw anything anywhere. Again, it doesn't make sense. So that functional form, g over v, can't possibly be true. And you can do these sort of tests for all sorts of calculations. Now let's say, for example, you're trying to calculate, if you've got an asteroid in space, mass m, and you send a spacecraft past at distance d, how much is it deflected? Maybe it's an angle or something like that of deflection. Now let's say someone told you that the correct answer to this was that the deflection was e to the m over dg. Is that plausible? Well, you can look at some limiting cases. What happens if the asteroid mass is zero? If the asteroid's mass is zero, there shouldn't be any deflection. But here, e to the m, e to the zero, is one, not zero. So there'll be a deflection from asteroids of zero mass. That makes it very dangerous that the uh, deflection is going to be, uh, you can be deflected by asteroids that aren't even there. How about if someone told you that the deflection was g m squared e to the d. Well, I wouldn't trust that either. It's it's behaving better with mass. If the mass is zero, there's no deflection, so that's sensible. But this e to the d, that gets bigger as the deflection gets larger. So if you go really close to an asteroid, no, you're not going to get affected very much at all, whereas an asteroid at the other end of the universe is going to deflect you by an infinite amount, or e to the large number is a very large number. So that doesn't make sense either. 
How about g m over d cubed? Well, in this case, if the mass is zero, there's no deflection, a large mass has more deflection, so that makes sense. In this case, the further away, the less the deflection, which makes sense. And likewise, if gravity is stronger, there's going to be more deflection, which again makes sense. So I'm not saying this is the right answer, but it has a plausible functional form. Whereas this one and that one do not.